Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to our talk. Um, we are at the second year of the map quality measurements, so we have a 2.0 there. Um, we are working on a lot of um, map quality measurements in tools, in the visualizations, but mostly we want to actually call out to some collaboration efforts that you probably work on the similar things. You probably are working on a lot of editings. Um, but anyway, that's just diving a little bit. My name is Monica Brandeis. I'm the senior analyst in the Critigen. Hello, everyone. I'm Daniel Castro. I'm a GIS data analyst at Critigen. I am Tian Yuren. I'm also a data analyst at Critigen. So before we actually work on this very cool tools and a lot of concepts, I want to just kind of roll back a little bit, um, cover a little bit kind of foundation for the data quality measurements in the OSM. Before, you know, just like right on this OSM started in the early years, the data coverage definitely is and issues, and it's definitely a quality measure that everyone is looking and then keep tracking on how much data we produce every year, what's the coverage, where are the area we're still missing. So missing maps, a lot of OSM analytics and a lot of projects actually work on this like really hard and they're still working on that to try to get, you know, coverage more and more in the world. Then that creates some, you know, concerns or confusions or I wouldn't say distrust, but they, they start to look at the location precisions, trying to get accuracy actually up to a lot of uh, proprietary resources, government resources, other different resources. Um, when the year comes to like five, 10 years, people want a lot of refreshments. People want the data to be up to date. So a lot of human validation was actually join the, this like community efforts and then produce a lot of a good quality data for our OSM community. Today, I'm gonna set those three focus aside a little bit, we're gonna work and then we're gonna introduce this rule-based validation using Alice Checks. So what's Alice Check? The Alice Check is a Java-based program that systematically flag various types of map errors um, by system, also including a role networks. The role networks in the OSM has a more relaxing and flexible mapping schemas. So in order to actually capture a lot of uh, map errors, Alice check turned the OSM data into an Alice, um, which is, especially for the role network, you can see it's actually splitting the road into a different sections, majorly in the, by the intersection, to create a connected graph representation of a role network. Thus, the um, program can actually systematic come in and flag and looking at the connections, looking at the overlapping, looking at the different issues of a network. Let me give you examples of um, one Alice check into the geometry. So this road building intersection check is focused on um, to flag out, to find out what's the row and the building that's actually intersect was not properly mapped, didn't being like disconnected or didn't create a proper tackings like um, the roads that cross the building. Another types of Alice checks focus on the row attributes. So this is a rule base. So rule base was What's the rules? It's basically based on a lot of OSM wiki general um, recommendations. Take this one, for example, the unusual layer tag check checks on the tag combination of a layer tag, layer tag the bridge tag, and the tunnel tag. Um, this one, that being flag, has a bridge tag, but it is actually locking off a layer tag. It might create some rendering and routing issues. Thus, it was being flagged in one of the Alice check. 
by looking off all the alice check um, currently in um, the software, we in the, this team actually hand selected 11 LS check for the role network. Um, we try to cover a different aspect, such as the road crossing roads, the road crossing buildings, the snake road where the roads being digitizing like a snake. Um, there's some roundabouts that has a very weird connections. Also, there are some mini roundabouts that actually were not mini roundabout based on different rules. Um, for the tag and relations, we focus on the signpost, we focus on the access tag, we focus on the name, layer, land tag, as well as the turn restriction check on the relation. As we, some of us might know that might be still some issues that we can improve. So, when running those 11 checks, our, like, my main question was getting to, this is one of the uh, check results from the signpost. This is actually giving you a very clear area of focus. Like, okay, we need to focus on that green segments. That's our focus. Now, when we overlapping with uh, another check, then we were like, okay, this is a like roughly area we want to focus on. And then when we overlapping, this is only three, and we're running 11, and we're running whole US cities, like 51 US cities. And as you can imagine, like when people come to me and ask me, what's a role, what's a role quality in the US? I was looking at this result, I was like, hmm, how can I answer this question? Mm, there needs to be some tools that I, I, I need. Um, the map quality measurement tools is actually developed and centraling by responding my questions um, or questions people ask me. We create a vector grid layers to show the hotspot for map layers. And then we want the grid size to be kind of a very flexible and then very like kind of dynamic determined by the distribution of the map bears. So yeah, I got, I got the concept. I got a concept, but how can I get there? Um, the, few, the following few slides will actually walk you through how the logics, the logic actually work in behind uh, this MQM tool. So we take the CD boundaries and then we run this 11 LS checks. We collect all of them as a GeoJSON input and then we generate a bounding box surrounding it. So again, what's our focus? Our focus is trying to figure out where the hotspot is. So I kind of have to make a, a subjective decision um, to start with and then I choose like 90% of a grid has less than 10 OSM errors being a cold spot in order to force my program to find the 10% of the hotspot that I want to focus on right away. So the program will firstly start splitting by a power of two grids and then start counting the um, features, the error features in those grids. When it keeps splitting, all the way through, then it will stop and then generate the GeoJSON when it's reached to the, the criteria you entered. Um, the criteria you entered here can be customized. It's kind of a comment line where you can just put, I want 95%, I want really clean. Let's make it like a less than two is a cold spot. Then you're gonna end up a lot of hot spot for sure. Um, but, or you're gonna end up the grid size is very small, but you're actually looking and then be able to make decision on your map activities. With some renderings help, we are creating this pretty maps to actually show and highlight you, hey, this is the 30, um, this is the 30 map errors. That's the first thing we want to focus on. Um, my question then comes into, what if I run a lot of this queries, this is a map error, but no one actually used those roads. How can I, mm, like the usage should be 
as a matrix to prioritize this. And that's one of our this year's focus, um, which Dan will be covered, is how can we reprioritize the map errors by, house, by usage using census data? Yeah, so now that we've generated our MQM layers and we have kind of a number of how many errors per grid, uh, we wanted to focus on road usage. Um, so in order for us to do that, we wanted to look into population of each of the census tracts in each city. And we also wanted to look at car ownership of um, each city. Um, but before we were able to do that, we need to generate some of the uh, data. So we began by going through the American Community Survey and getting each of the counties that each of the cities are in and uh, clipping them. Then we generated uh, a roster layer. Um, this was for better integration with the MQM grids. And then um, once with, uh, we generated the MQM grids uh, using the city boundaries to give the cities more of an accurate representation. Then we calculated the mean value of uh, roster layers for each grid using the MQM grids. And then we normalized the values 0 to 1 and then visualized the results. Uh, but we didn't want to take the focus away from uh, MQM results, uh, but we did want to include the census layers. So what we did is we added a heavier weight onto the MQM layer um, using 70% and then still being able to in include the census um, adding like a 30% to it, ultimately resulting in this combined layer. So this leads us to a result of three different types of layers. Um, this kind of puts the um, reprior reprioritization into the hands of the users. Um, so a user can go in and look at just the MQM results, or they can look at MQM together with population, or they can look at MQM and car ownership together. Um, but Tanya is going to come up next and kind of walk us through what the app actually looks like. Right. Uh, so we created a web app to show our analysis results. Uh, the address is up there. So osmquality.io. I'm going to do a quick demo and show you what it looks like. But feel free to tag along and check on our phone if you want. Um, so this year, we looked at data quality for 51 US cities. These are the most populated city in each state, plus Washington, DC. And we ranked them based on the overall data quality and also provided some detailed visualization and stats for each city. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at the website. OK, this is a very smooth transition. <laughs> All right, bear with me. OK, so this is our website. And first thing you'll see is the ranking list of all the cities. Uh, the cities are ranked based on this errors rate, which I'm going to explain a little bit later. Uh, let's now go to a city to see what it looks like. Let's see. Minneapolis. OK. So on the top of the page, you can see the city and its ranking. Uh, Minneapolis is ranked number 27. It's ranked based on this errors rate, which is calculated by dividing the total number of error features by the total number of OSM features in the city. Uh, you can find both of these numbers on the quick stats section here. So 155 is the total number of error features in a city. And this number is the total number of OSM features. Dividing the former battle ladder, we got errors rate. So the higher the errors rate is, uh, the lower the data quality is. Um, we, Because this is the second year we're doing this, we want to compare the data quality to last year's. Uh, and the first number you can see is the errors rate difference compared to 2018. And a negative value means that the errors rate has dropped, and the data quality has improved for Minneapolis. Uh, and on the center of the page, you can see a map showing the map error density. Uh, the dashed line is, represents the city boundary, and the colored grids represent the density of map errors. Uh, the, darker the, the darker the color is for the grid, the more map errors there are in that area, and therefore the higher priority there should be assigned to the area uh, when it comes to mapping and editing efforts. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, this year we also want to provide the option to weight the results by some socioeconomic factors. So you can easily view the results weighted by population or car ownership. As you can see, the layers are slightly different, but the grid with the most errors stay as the hotspots. That's because we assign a higher weight to the MQM layer and a lower weight to the other two. 
Uh, and also, the grid size is, is determined by the city area as well as the distribution of map errors. So it's the same uh, among the three layers for each city, but it varies uh, across cities. So the grid size uh, value is actually shown here on the quick stat section. It's three square kilometers for uh, Minneapolis. But if I go to another city, you can see the number varies quite a bit. And finally, we have a bar chart graph showing the map errors by Alice check types. So recall that there are two main types for Alice checks. Uh, the error can be either a geometry one or an attribute one. And as you can see in this city, the majority of map errors are attribute errors. So that means when you fix those errors, it's basically fixing the tag values instead of geometries. OK, so now you know how we rank the cities, but you might still have some doubts about the ranking. So let me explain a little bit more on that. Uh, so again, the ranking is based on this error rate, which is basically just a rough estimation of the percentage of rows that has mapping errors. Um, because it's a percentage, uh, a city with increasing error features might rank higher than a city with decreasing uh, uh, road errors. And when it comes to ranking changes, it can be quite dynamic and unpredictable. And however, we observed that overall the data quality has improved in OSM uh, within the last year. We saw 69% of cities have a decreased amount of error features, and 86% of them have a lower uh, MQM errors rate. The total feature counts increased in each city, meaning that there were mo more roads being digitized in each city. And finally, the MQM errors rate at each ranking decreased. So overall, the quality increased for uh, these 51 cities by our standards. Um, and this year, we made some enhancements. So last year, we were just using a kind of user-defined bounding box to represent a city, which was uh, not a very accurate representation. So this year, we make sure we're using uh, the city boundary as our data extent. And to do this, we are using a different data source instead of extracting OSM data using a bounding box. This year, we pulled the full OSM history PBF file and used city boundaries and timestamps uh, to generate the data for 2018 and 2019. We tried to incorporate some, incorporate some uh, social economic factors to reprioritize the hotspots by usage. And finally, with two years data, uh, we re-ran the results using 2018, 2019, and we were able to do a trend analysis. Uh, for future enhancements, we still see a lot of opportunities to further improve our tool. Uh, for instance, we can uh, test other data inputs other than Alice checked results, such as overpass turbo work results, et cetera, and focus on other layers other than road layers and see what the data quality looks like for like addresses, buildings, water, et cetera. Uh, and also, we're thinking of using different measurements for um, usage level and better ways to rank the cities. Uh, currently, the, the ranking is only based on this percentage. Uh, which is a true representation of the data quality, but can be a little bit biased in terms of ranking. So in the future, we're thinking of incorporating other metrics, such as routing tests, or metrics of like the digitization level of the city uh, to have a better representation of the data quality. And finally, our end goal is to incorporate this tool into the existing editing tools, such as Jocelyn Hot Task Manager, uh, so that we can not only show where the hot stop spots are, but you can just go there and start edit data. Uh, that's our end goal. Uh, and in that way, we want to also contribute to the community. Um, so if you want to see some of these or all these happening, please stay tuned for MQM 3.0 next year. Um, and we cannot accomplish this project without the support of our colleagues. So I want to thank them for their hard work. And please stay connected with us. Check out our app. And uh, we welcome uh, any questions and comments. And thank you for listening. <laughs>